I'm Alexandra Samuel, and I'm a technology writer, researcher, and consultant. And I'm the author of Work Smarter with Social Media from Harvard Business Review Press. When I talk with people about their online lives, pretty much everyone uh, asks me about email. We all have some kind of email pain, whether it's a matter of the amount of time we feel like we have to spend on email, the fact that we never get to see the bottom of our inbox. So get ready to roll up your sleeves, open your inbox, and discover the beauty and freedom of having email that doesn't drive you nuts. Each and every one of those emails in your inbox is a demand, even if it's a really tiny demand. It's a demand that says, read me, look at me, decide what to do with me, decide what to do with me. And the cumulative impact of all those tiny micro decisions is sapping your life force. Like seriously, we're being drained of our decision-making energy by the sheer volume of decisions that we have to make every time we look in our inbox. But we're gonna take that decision-making work and turn it into rules that make the decisions for you. Those are still your decisions because you're setting the parameters but you're not gonna to have to do that work each and every time you open your inbox. Different email systems use different terms for mail rules. Gmail calls the mail filters, but just about every email client or service offers some version of, um, of mail rules. So you just need to figure out what it's called in your service. And to the extent you can, um, try and create your mail rules with your email provider not your email client. So if you use mail as your application for checking email on your computer, but you use Gmail as your email service provider, create your rules in Gmail so that they spread across all your devices. Otherwise, you're gonna have to recreate the same set of rules on your phone and on your computer. A mail filter consists of two pieces, a criterion and an action. So the criterion or criteria are the parts of the rule that tell it what to look for. So for example, it says, look for every email that includes the word unsubscribe, or look for every email that comes from Expedia. And the action tells the mail rule what to do once it finds a message that meets your criteria. So for example, when you find an email that contains the word unsubscribe, file it in the folder called newsletters. Which mail rules change your life is going to depend a lot on the kind of email you get and how you want to see it, where you want it to land. But there are a few mail rules that I find are incredibly helpful for the vast majority of people. The first mail rule I'll recommend is what I call the scheduling rule. Now, a lot of our email these days consists of calendar invitations. And of course, you need to see when you're invited to a meeting. But do you actually need to see it in your email? Or do you want to see it in your calendar, which is actually where you're going to be able to make sense of whether you're available or not? Creating your scheduling rule is really simple. Any calendar invitation comes with a file that contains the suffix .ics. So now, to convert that into an email rule, I say create filter with a search. When a message arrives that matches this search, skip the inbox so it doesn't land in my inbox anymore and apply the label scheduling. And now to make sure I'm clearing off my inbox at the same time as setting up my mail rules, I check this box that says also apply filter to one matching conversation. Create filter. That email is now magically filed under scheduling and you can see that it's not a problem that Becca's message doesn't land in my inbox because if I go to my calendar, it's right there as a calendar invitation. So as long as I'm looking at my calendar a week or two ahead, which I do almost every day anyhow, I will notice any invitations that have come in in my calendar and I can accept them right from my calendar without having to see them in my inbox. Next, we've got our newsletters rule. I mean, newsletters are like the kudzu of email. They overgrow your inbox and take over until 98% of what comes into your inbox is some bulk message from some service you signed up in, you know, 2012. So you got to get those newsletters out of your inbox. To make things simple, I like to start by creating one catch-all rule 
that just looks for the word unsubscribe. So by creating a filter from that search, I can make all of those messages skip the inbox and go directly to newsletters. Right now I have 209 messages in my inbox. Let's see what happens when I file everything that contains the word unsubscribe. I've almost cut my inbox traffic in half with that one mail rule. My inbox is now half as frightening as it was five minutes ago. Let's say there's an email newsletter you subscribe to that you actually want to look at on a pretty regular basis and maybe it deserves its own folder. For example, let's say I want to look at the Help a Reporter Out, the Harrow newsletter, on a regular basis because it has media inquiries that could be interesting. Well, I'll do a search, find all of the Harrow newsletters, and create a filter with that search. Gmail is going to complain here because it doesn't like it when you create searches based on a label because it can't run that search when your email first hits your inbox. But in this case, it doesn't matter because the label is being created by another rule. And I apply the label newsletter arrow. Apply it to 12 matching messages. And now the Harrow newsletter has its own folder where I can look at just those messages when I want to find myself a media opportunity. Another great way of fitting out your inbox is with a separate mail rule for CCs. By definition, if somebody is CCing you on a message, that means it is not that important for you to see personally. To create a CC's rule, you need to look for all messages in which your email address appears in the CC field. Whenever a CC arrives, skip the inbox and apply the label CC's. So I like to set up a mail rule that catches any receipt or invoice and files it in a folder marked financial. You probably want to look for a few keywords like invoice, receipt, or receipt. Got to keep those ors in there. And now take a quick look. Does everything in here count as something I would not want to have seen? Well, most of it is. This reminder from the city of Vancouver that I need to renew my business license. That would be a bad one to miss. So I'm going to create some exceptions. Invoice or receipt minus renewal, because anything that contains the word renewal might be a reminder that I need to renew an account. By putting brackets around the term invoice or receipt, what I'm telling Gmail is search for any email that includes either the term invoice or the word receipt and that does not include the word renewal. But you can see that even with that tweak, I'm still catching a few emails in this mailbox that I really ideally would see in my inbox. So this is where you have to experiment a little bit. It can take some fine tuning to think about um, how you're going to create the exact search that will catch the email you want to catch and send it directly to finance. I look in the email, I see why it matched the term, and at the end of that process, I usually can find some little tweak to my search, either an extra phrase to add or a phrase to exclude that gets my filter tuned to just the level of exactness I need. One more mail rule I'd like to mention is a little bit different from the others I've talked about so far. But there's one kind of rule I like to use for emails that are so important they can't even wait until I've checked my email. You can create rules that allow you to forward messages to your cell phone whenever you find yourself compulsively checking your email for a certain incoming message. We go into settings, we go to forwarding, and we set up a forwarding address. My forwarding address is going to be my phone number as the basis for my SMS email address. 
Once again, I set up a Gmail search based on the criteria I'm looking for, and I create a filter from that search. Except this time, instead of skipping the inbox, which is like taking it off my radar, I want to put it right front and center of my attention by forwarding it to my cell phone. And now, the second that Becca emails me, I will get an SMS message, a text message on my phone, letting me know I have an email from Becca. So instead of compulsively checking my email every 20 minutes to see if Becca has emailed, which is what I usually do, I only look at my phone if it pings, and then I know if I hear from Becca, I'll be able to look at her email right away. Particularly when you first set up your email filters, you're going to need to look at your all mail folder pretty regularly. That's where you can see all your email, whether it's filtered or not, to make sure your rules aren't catching stuff that actually needs to land in your inbox. So for example, if I went in and looked at all mail, I would see that those emails that got caught in my financial filter actually need to be coming into my inbox, and that's my signal that I need to tweak my rule and make it a little less comprehensive. That tweaking is gonna work in both directions. You're gonna to need to tweak your rules to make sure that you're not filtering out stuff you actually need to see, and you're also gonna to need to tweak your rules in order to get rid of the stuff that's still hitting your inbox. So don't expect this to happen overnight. With the right rules, the initial rules I'm recommending, you could well reduce the volume of stuff that hits your inbox by half. And you know, that's pretty good. But the more you put extra time into tweaking your rules over the next few weeks, the more rapidly you're gonna reduce the volume of email hitting your inbox and move to a situation where most stuff is handled by your rules. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.